Now today we are going to look at a, a very important passage of scripture from Ephesians chapter number 1, uh, beginning with verse number 3, uh, all the way through verse number 14. And uh, uh, the, the, the sermon title for the day is a Chosen, Redeemed, and Sealed. Chosen, Redeemed, and Sealed. And we find that in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 14. Now, who are we talking about? Chosen, redeemed, and sealed. Are we talking about the disciples of Jesus? Are we talking about the Jewish believers who trusted in the Lord um, earlier on? Who are we talking about when we talk about chosen, redeemed, and sealed? It is talking about you and me. Praise God. We are in, in such, a, such a blessed and privileged group of people, and, and God has done so much for us. But yet, at times, we, we think that God hasn't done anything for us, you know. But God has done so much for us, we ought to be the happiest people on the face of the earth. Praise God. The happiest people, because, you know, God has done, He loved us so much and gave us so much, we ought to be the happiest people in the whole world. And we need to be singing and praising and thanking God for that. Praise God. In Ephesians chapter 1, we, we have these wonderful, wonderful words uh, listed there. There are many more things God has done for us. Not simply those three things I mentioned, but those three things stand out. So I just wanted to bring them to your remembrance. As I was preparing this message, I thought, you know, last week Pastor Danny talked about the fear of God, you know, uh, telling the believers that you need to do this, you need to obey this, you need to practice this. Today I am just going to remind you some of the things to build you up. Amen. Amen. So in, in a church you get all kinds of messages, all kinds of messages. Some of them are correction messages, right? You need to correct, you need to be reproved, you need to be, uh, you know, changing direction in your life. So you get messages like that. Uh, when, when, when we say, you know, you need to fear God, that is a, that's a, a, a message of correction, um, bringing us in line with what God wants us to do. Sometimes we preach about deliverance and those who are going through difficulties, uh, those messages, messages are needed uh, for those people. They need deliverance and healing and such that. But sometimes some messages are purely the truths of God which would build us up. Amen. Amen. Just simply the facts, the truths that God has given to us, listening to it, reading it, simply makes us joyful, uh, wanting to grow in the Lord. It is a building up kind of sermon. Praise God. And I hope I can do a, a job on, on building you up today. Sometimes you have, we have to tear things down, right? And, and, and then start anew. But sometimes we just take what we have and, and build them up. So today, we are going to build you up in the Lord by talking about being chosen, redeemed, and sealed. Praise God. Chosen, redeemed, and sealed. So our scripture portion today is Ephesians 1, 3 through 14. Please turn in your Bible. It is one thing to look at the screen. Uh, if you have your Bible, you don't need to look at the screen. But it is better to look in your Bible. Then look at the screen, because you have it with you always. So please look in your Bible. If you don't have your Bible, then you can look, it, uh, look on the screen. But I encourage you to bring your Bible when you come to the house of God. All right? Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Uh, that verse in itself is so rich, so rich with the truths of God's uh, uh, work in us, what God has done for us. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us, praise God. You see, uh, that was interesting for me to see that word blessed listed two times in that passage. Did you see that? Listed two times. Blessed is listed two times. 
You know, the first blush is the Apostle Paul blessing God. Blessing God. Amen. And the second blessing is what God has blessed us with. Amen. 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 So here the Apostle Paul is blessing God for the blessing that we have. Praise God. So we need to be a people who blesses God, who bless God. Amen. We read in the book of Psalms, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Praise God. And and then we read uh, another Psalm 34, I will bless the Lord at all times. Praise God. So the Apostle Paul, when we remembered the blessings of God upon us, he could not but help give blessings to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, the two blessings are somewhat different. One blessing is God bestowing his favor, his goodness on us. And the other blessing is that we lifting up and honoring God for who he is and what he has done. Amen. So may, may each one of us be a person uh, who will bless the Lord. Especially when we remember what God has done for us. So blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. When I read that passage, I thought about me and others who always pray, God bless me. Eh? God bless me, bless him, bless her, bless her, bless my son, bless my daughter. But we never think about God who has already blessed us. Hallelujah. 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 He has already blessed us. Hallelujah. Isn't that what we read there? Yes. Blessed be the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us. Amen. Yes. My friend, God already has blessed you. Amen. Amen. So before you start praying, bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me, take a moment to say, Lord, I thank you for your blessings in my life. Praise God. I thank you for your blessings. Amazing the way that the Apostle Paul is bringing this out to us. Amen. Praise God. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed, when we say blessed us, you know, he was writing to a group of believers who include the Jews and the Gentiles, and he's saying that, you know, he has not only blessed the Jews because the Jews felt like they were the blessed people. Amen? Amen? They thought they had the law. They had the commandments. They had the promises. They were God's people. They were the chosen one. Now the apostle Paul is saying, God has blessed us, meaning the Jews and the Gentiles, praise God. So the blessing in Jesus Christ is for everyone. Everyone. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever, amen, amen, that whosoever includes every race, every nationality, every whatever it is, everybody is included. In the plan of salvation, God included everyone, everyone, and that includes you and me. So he said, bless us, bless us. It is not a privilege to a few people, but it is a privilege God has given to all of us. Amen. Blessed us with every spiritual blessing. Now, how did God bless us in Jesus Christ? You know, he has blessed us with spiritual blessing. I know most of us want material blessings. Right? Huh? We want material, but we want our sons and our daughters to grow up by become engineers and doctors and, and astronauts or whatever it might be. We want those material blessings. We want our children to get the best job there is. We want everything to go well for us. Material prosperity, material blessing. But before we think too much about the material blessing, we ought to consider 
which blessings are better for us. Amen? Always spiritual blessings are better than material blessings. Amen? But very seldom we give priority to spiritual blessings. If you listen to our prayers, even I am, I am at fault with that. On every, every morning I tell people, we are sick people. We have people traveling. We are people this, people that. Please pray for them, pray for them. And every once in a while I get convicted. You did not pray for the lost souls. You did not pray for the missionaries who are laboring and in difficult positions. You see, my, belief, my brothers and sisters, the spiritual blessings are always to be desired more than the material blessing. Praise God. So the Apostle Paul is giving thanks to God, blessings to God for every spiritual blessing. He can name them one by one. You know the, you know the song, count your blessings, name them one by one. We can, we can name the blessings of God, especially when it comes to spiritual blessings. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. Now, where? In heavenly places. See, this is a difference between material blessing and spiritual blessing. Spiritual blessing has to do with our future. Material blessing has to do with now. Material, earthly, temporal blessings. But spiritual blessing not only lasts here, but also into eternity. So we need to desire more of the spiritual blessings of God. You know, the Bible primarily talks about spiritual blessings. And it doesn't talk a lot about material blessings. That doesn't mean that God will not bless us materially. He will bless us materially. We have examples of people right here in our church God has blessed us temporarily. He has given us good education. God has given us doctors and lawyers and professionals of various kinds. Praise God for that. Praise God. But our priority is how they do in spiritual matters. Amen. Like we talked about the other day in, on Friday morning, what shall a man profit? If he will gain the whole world and lose his own soul. Yes. Amen? Yes. Oh, we can reach the pinnacles, we can reach the highest mountain in our earthly accomplishment, but what do they mean when you have no relationship with Jesus Christ? Hallelujah. They're nothing. They're nothing. So my friend, praise God, we need to understand that spiritual blessings are to be desired because spiritual blessings relates more to heaven than to the earth. Praise God. You, you, we, we are seated in heavenly places with Christ, aren't we? We are seated because Jesus rose again from the dead and he sat at the right hand of the Father. Those who believe in him are spiritually, positionally placed with him in the heavenly places. Praise God. There's an old English song that says, My home is not here. I am just a passing through. My home is in heaven, built by God himself. Praise God. Amen. So if you aim on something, aim above. Look above. That is more important. What happened to our scripture, brothers? Your time ran out, I think. Amen. Let's go back to it. Amen. Uh, heavenly places in Christ, another thing. All our blessings are in Christ. Amen. 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 We must remember that. Every single blessing that we have is in Christ because of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Every blessing is in Christ. I did not deserve them. I did not work for them. It is a favor of God. In Christ, because of Jesus, 
our blessings come to us. Verse number four, this is one of our first points. Just as he chose us in him. Just as he chose us in him. Now who chose who? God chose us. Amen. Even though it was written to the Ephesian church a long time ago, that word us applies to everyone sitting here in this congregation today and those who are watching online and everyone who trusts in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. You see, he chose me. Isn't that a wonderful thing to know that the eternal, everlasting God chose me to be his own? Amen? Amen? Now you sit there like that's nothing. It is everything. It is everything. The fact, the truth that God has merciful enough, gracious enough to look and choose me to be one of his own. Praise God. Would you say, God, I thank you for choosing me. You look around the whole world, there are millions and billions of people who have no relationship with him. But today we can thankfully say, God, I thank you for choosing me. Praise God. Amen. I thank you for choosing me. He chose us in him before the foundation of the world. When did the choosing happen, dear ones? It happened before even we came into existence. The Bible says even the before the foundation of the world. I cannot go that far. Long, long, long time ago, before I was born, God chose me. He saw me. Amen. Someone said, when Jesus died on the cross, he saw you. He saw you. And that's why he died. Before the foundation of the world is a past, it has already happened. He chose us. That we should be holy and without blame before him in love. The purpose of God's choosing us is that we should be a holy people. We should be a blameless people. Amen? We should be a blameless people. Chose us, Jews and Gentiles. Chose us out for himself. In him, in Christ, it is in Christ we have all our blessing. Before the foundation of the world, way back in the past, he chose. Praise God. The purpose of God choosing me and you is that we will be a holy people and without blame. Amen. You know, the last note there is God did not choose a holy people, but he chose sinners that they be holy. Praise God. Huh? Because, not because of some worth in us. Some good in us. There was no good in us when he chose us. We were sinners. Dead in trespasses and sins. Dead in trespasses and sins. Praise God. Someone said, uh, you know, explaining that, that condition that we were in. You know, one preacher said, you know, it's like somebody falling from a roof a rooftop and breaking all his limbs, unable to move in a, in a very precarious position. And, and someone else said, no, 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 that is not a good comparison. It is like somebody falling from the top of the Empire State Building and totally lost when he fell down to the ground. We were without life. Without life. And it is in that condition that God chose us. Praise God. He chose us, dear ones, and that should be reason to celebrate. That should be reason to rejoice in the Lord. We have so many celebrations in our church. I hope one day somebody will come up an idea. Let us celebrate what God has done. Amen. 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 Board, I'm giving you a challenge. <laughs> Pretty soon, take a, declare a day today. We are going to celebrate what God has done for us. Amen? Praise God. And on that day, there will be 20 people testifying what God has done. Just take a day to celebrate the goodness of God, the mercy and the grace of God. 
Praise God. You know, when I always, when I talk about being chosen by God, I remember my, my teenage days. You know, in the evening, the, the young kids in the block, in the, in, the, in, the, in the village, in the community will go to the main road, go to the main road, and gather there to play ball. In the evening, after school, and you know, they will come, and many, many, many teenagers, uh, you know, people in the, the low 20s, they will gather there to play ball. There will be 15, 20 young people there, and, uh, and there will be a couple of captains, you know, two teams, and uh, I don't know how they became captain, because they, maybe because they look bigger than everybody else, or maybe they were older than uh, There were two captains, and, and then they said, well, let, let us start a team, and one captain, one, one captain will, okay, I want him in my team. I, I want him in my team. You know, so people call all these people, and always there will be three or four people left <laughs> that, that, that nobody wants. <laughs> and nobody wants them. And finally, because they are there, the captains have had to listen, well, I take him. You know, that's not the way God chose us. God chose us before we were in that line. Hallelujah! God chose us because we were trying to get, before we were trying to get in. That's the kind of choosing God does in your life and in mine. Knowing all of our weaknesses, knowing all of our sins and, and, and shortcomings, He chose you to be His own children, His own people. Praise God. Such amazing love. Such amazing grace. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Praise God. I once was lost, but now I am found. I was blind, but now I see. Give praise to the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Amazing grace of God. So the first thing is that he chose us. He chose us. Praise God. He chose us. Talking about the teams, I read about a, a, a young boy. You know, he also came to play the game one day, and uh, because he was very short and uh, not athletically minded, the, the teams would not choose him. They, they all, he was always left out. Amen. I know you are to thinking in your mind, Pastor is talking about himself. <laughs> your imagination is running wild. <laughs> Anyway, there was this boy that nobody will choose them. But then one day, a couple of people showed up in the game. They were bigger than everybody else. So naturally, they became the captains of the teams. And then the time came for choosing, you know, team members. One of the captains, the first person that called the name was this guy who was left out all the time. He called him. Praise God. And you need to ask the question, what, question why? Praise God. The captain was his brother. He called him because he didn't want him to be embarrassed. Because he loved him. Praise God. God loved us enough to call us to be his own. Not because we deserved it. Not because we have a big name, family name attached to our life. But because he loved us. Because he loved us. Praise God. Praise be to God. He chose us. The next thing I want to remind you today is not only that he chose us. There are many more things we can read in that chapter. I cannot take time to go on all, 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 all those things. It talks about predestination. It talks about adoption and other things. But we will not go into that today. But we want to focus on three things because it is easy to remember three things than 30 things, right? So remember those three things. The second thing is that he redeemed us. 
He redeemed us. In, 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 here we, in him, we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. This is a second great blessing we have from God. Praise God. What is it? He has redeemed us. A redemption means that we were slaves. We, we, we belong to the, the wrong person. And, and someone has to pay a price to redeem us, to restore us into that relationship with God. Praise God. So Jesus came. God sent his son to die on the cross. Jesus came. He died on the cross by his blood. He redeemed us. Praise God. Now, I am looking at a bunch of great people today. We call them the redeemed of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Remember reading in the Bible, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Amen. Amen. How many of you know in your heart of hearts, I've been redeemed. I've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Praise God. All sins are washed away. Amen. So in him we have redemption through his blood. If a forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Now, it's, the Bible says that we have redemption. That's past, isn't it? We, we already have redemption. Redemption is some, not something we wait for. It has already happened. But there is a redemption in a sense that will be complete when Jesus comes. But for now, we have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. We have been redeemed. You see, when a person comes to faith in Christ, when he believes in the Lord by faith, at that very moment... He is saved and he is redeemed. His sins are washed away. So the redemption is a present possession. Each one of you, you, you can say, I am redeemed. I am redeemed, praise God. Amen. If you have courage enough to look at the next person and say, you know, I am redeemed. Amen. I am redeemed. Amen. I am redeemed. Redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Praise God. We have redemption redeemed from the power and the guilt and the penalty of sin. We are redeemed from the power and the grip, the guilt, and the, and the penalty of, of sin. Praise God. The sin has no dominion over us anymore. Praise God. The Bible says, do not give any room to the devil. Right? Pishajana, Edom. Why? You know, until and unless we give him room, he cannot get in. We are covered by the blood of Jesus. Praise God. When the enemy sees the blood of Jesus all around you, he will have to pass by. Just like what happened back in the Exodus. When, when, the, when the death angel came and he saw the blood, he had to pass by. He cannot do anything there. Praise God. So, we are redeemed from the power and the guilt and the penalty of sin. The wages of sin is death. We are redeemed. Praise God. Amen. In the Old Testament, there was this idea of a kinsman redeemer. What that means is that if somebody was so poor or in slavery... He could not redeem himself because he was so poor. Somebody in his family could come along and then redeem him. Pay the price and redeem him and set him free. Amen? Oh, what a joy that would be for that person who was in slavery. Amen? Praise God. That person will be forever uh, thankful to that person. A kinsman who came, and we know the story of Ruth, uh, what happened in her law, in her, in her, li in her life. You know, there was a redeemer, Boaz, to redeem uh, the, the property of uh, Naomi and, and bring him back into possession. Praise God. Amen. Well, our kinsman redeemer is Jesus Christ. Our kinsman redeemer is Jesus Christ. He came from glory. 
He came from glory. He became a man. Hallelujah. So that he can be our kinsman. He became us just one of us. So he can redeem us from the slavery of sin, from the penalty of death, from the destruction that awaits people who do not know God. Jesus Christ is our kinsman redeemer. Praise God. He came from heaven to earth, show me the way. Praise God. He came. Jesus came to redeem me from my sins. Praise God. The third point I want us to remember is that not only he chose us, not only he redeemed us, not only he did these two things, but the third thing we want to mention today is that he sealed us with the Holy Spirit. Praise God. He sealed us with the Holy Spirit. Amen. When he chose us, when he redeemed us, Praise God that we became very precious to him. And therefore, he sealed us by the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in him you have also, you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Do you know that you've been sealed? Praise God. When we talk about seal or sealing, the, the, the one thing that comes to mind to me is uh, when I write a letter or, a, or, or a, want to send something to somebody by, the, by mail, you put the content in the mail and you seal that mail, right? You seal it. And why do you seal it for? To, to make it secure, right? To make that things won't fall out of it. You, you want to make it secure. And, and the second thing is that, you know, the, the post office requires me to do that. Amen. Right? Praise God. In order for them to take possession of it, it has to be properly packaged. Amen? So the Bible says that I have been sealed, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the sealing shows authenticity that we are truly the children of God. If the Holy Spirit is to be used in our sealing, that means we are truly the children of God. Amen. The moment we trust in Jesus Christ with all our heart, invite him into our life as our Lord and Savior, that very moment the Holy Spirit comes to play, take his residence in our life. Amen. How many of you know today that the Holy Spirit resides in you? Amen. The Holy Spirit resides in you. You had to keep that vessel pretty holy. Amen. Know ye not you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. How often people of God forget that. Know ye not that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You see, when we trust in Jesus, you know, the Apostle Paul is saying, when you, after you heard the word of truth, that's the gospel. After you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, secondly, after you believed, you know, hearing is one thing, but believing is the next thing. Amen? Many people hear the gospel, but they don't take any action on that. Once you hear the gospel, the next thing is we must believe it. Unless it doesn't do any good for us. The Bible says here, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed, you believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. You were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise who is the guarantee of your inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. So the seal indicates, the seal indicates uh, authenticity, security, and ownership. All three are true of us. 
We are authentically the children of God. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we, that we should be called the children of God. Amen. Help me to fill out some of these blanks here. Amen. You know the scriptures, don't you? Amen. Praise God. Otherwise, we will send you all to the Sunday school classes. Praise God. Help me out. Amen. Let's, let's say that again. Uh, what, uh, uh, John uh, 3, 3, 1. Huh? What does it say? What's it? Behold. Behold what manner of love. What is the rest? Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called the children. Malayalam, 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 can't mean. Malayalam, Malayalam, can't mean. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Which is a lunch in a line, you know, 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 you the children of God, child of God. It's a great blessing. And we often take it so lightly. Praise God. Amen. The Lord has chosen me and you. The Lord has redeemed me and you. The Lord has sealed me by his Holy Spirit. Praise God. And made us his own people. Praise God. Talking about redemption. I read a story of a young boy who himself made a beautiful small boat. He was proud of what he has accomplished. And one day he took his small boat into the river. And there by the side of the river, he tied a small string to the boat and he put the boat into the river to see how it will, you know, Travel on the water. And the boy was so proud, the boat began to float on the, on, the, on the banks of the river, gently back and forth. All of a sudden, a strong current came without his knowing it and pulled the string away from his hands. Desperately, he began to run after the little boat that he has made with so much pride. But the current was so strong, it took the little boat away and away from the boy. He, he tried his best to recapture it. But he was unable to. He somehow lost it. The boy was so disappointed and so discouraged and so sad. He went back home dejected. Days went by. And one day he was walking, go, walking home to, to the, uh, through the town street and, and all of a sudden he, he saw a little boat in the glass window of a store. And he thought that looked like the one he had made. And then he got closer to it and sure enough, it was the boat that he had made. He ran into the store and said to the store owner, Sir, that is my boat. I made it myself. Would you please give me back my boat? Oh, the store owner said, No, son. Somebody else brought it here. And we gave him money to buy it. So it is there. If you want it, you had to buy it. And the boy asked the owner, well, how much? He said, one dollar. This is long ago. 
<laughs> One dollar. Praise God. Yesterday, when we were going to Dallas, we stopped at a store to buy some, some sandwiches. When I looked at the price, I just walked out of there. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'm not hungry. <laughs> it's unbelievable what, what, you know, what it costs to buy something these days. Anyway, this was a long time. So the owner said, one dollar. The boy ran home, took out his savings box and dropped every penny he had in it and counted them. Hallelujah. Thankfully, it came to be one dollar. He gathered all of them up. He went back to the store. And he said, here, here is the one dollar. Please give me the boat back. The store owner gave him his boat back. And the boy walked back home and he held the boat close to his chest. And said, and he t talked to the boat. Said, now boat you are twice mine now. You are twice mine. Amen. Once I made you, you were mine. But now I bought you. You are mine. Praise God. See, we were God's once. He created us. He made us. But we went our own way. All sheep has gone astray. But praise God. Now he brought me. Praise God. He made me his own. Made me his own. Praise God. Well, sorry, worship team. We are running away. Praise God. There is an old hy English hymn. I know most of you know that. So we will sing that song as we conclude this message.